Uh, this script is a library that I maintain. It's a kind of database for the client, for the browser. And so the idea is uh, why the hell do we need a database on the browser? Uh, the answer is uh, comes from actually from server-side programming, where like if you're doing server-side programming, the only like comfortable and sane way to maintain state is use to use a proper database, like SQL database, not not a NoSQL database, it's a pain in the ass. But uh, yeah, uh, normal uh, relational SQL database, it's a very easy, very powerful way to work with the state. So why can't we have the, the same features for the client? We can, of course. To try that idea out, so I write a library that implements data storage solution, like for an application. Uh, you have a lot of data and you keep it in a database, in a, in a browser, in memory. So it's not like a super uh, database like stuff where you create connection and send serialized queries through the pipe. No, it's just an in-memory data structure uh, that's like array or set of facts, basically. So it exists only in memory. Uh, it's super lightweight, uh, but it uh, has all the nice features that normal databases have, like you can run relational queries on them, you can run transactions, and you can have a lock of transactions. And uh, on top of that, uh, it's uh, immutable, like uh, all the uh, immutable JS, for example, or other immutable data structures, uh, which are very efficient to to create, create a new copies when you want to mutate them. You cannot mutate them, but you can create new copies based on the old ones, and you can have both old and new one, and they don't conflict. So it's very good for, for code clarity, and uh, there will be one feature that will use it uh, on a, on, in a browser. And it uh, turned out that uh, that approach is actually really good for a couple things on a client. First of them is data access, obviously. The main point of the database is to access data, to keep and access data uh, in a handy way. Uh, and two others are client server sync and optimistic updates. So data access, basically, if you are not using any solution to store your data, you probably won't end up, so if your application is small, say, right, right, or if it's just a website with some animations or something, uh, you, you, your state is small, you have a couple of objects, and you can use a like, ad hoc solution, uh, JavaScript object, JavaScript global variables, or stuff like that, or something like, yeah. And uh, it's fine, it's fine as long as it's, it's small, but uh, once it gets bigger, uh, it's actually beneficial to have it normalized. Uh, normalization, uh, the same term we, we use in database when we split data in tables and assign IDs to rows, basically, is uh, uh, it means that uh, you don't have a big nested uh, array of maps and arrays of uh, JavaScript objects, you have uh, your data flat, and you have uh, links between the data based on the IDs, basically. <clears throat> uh, and this is uh, good because um, when you de design your application, you don't really know uh, how uh, in future we will access your data. So, for example, if you have, uh, I don't know, messages and users, so users write messages, right? And you can have... Uh, a ad hoc solution uh, can have either user uh, link to messages or messages link to user, right? But you don't know which one, uh, which way you will need in the future. Maybe you will need both ways. You can have it both ways in, in something like that. So you need your data flat. And actually, it's um, uh, it means if you have your data flat, you don't, you don't have to decide um, when you start designing your database uh, what you will need in the future. So you, you keep your options open, right? Uh, Relay does that, for example, uh, Redux recommends that, and I, I think it's pretty sane thing to do. Uh, what, another benefit of database, like a proper database, uh, over the ad hoc solutions, or I don't know, yeah, it's a use of uh, indexes uh, and uh, lookups in indexes, right? So uh, if you need, if you, for example, if you have a database of users, 
the only way you can access that in JavaScript uh, ad hoc way is actually by ID, right? Uh, if you want to, um, to find the user with given ID, you can use hash map and you can reference uh, that user and look up it pretty fast. But for example, if you want to find every user whose name starts with N, uh, you can do that. You, can, you, you have to scan the whole array of your users. So basically, databases maintain indexes uh, which can do that efficiently and really fast. So uh, again, it, it doesn't matter if your data is small, if you only keep, uh, I don't know, 10 messages, one user, it doesn't matter, of course. But uh, once it's uh, quite big, it, it starts to matter. And it's usually uh, not very... Uh, you don't, okay, you don't do that at the start, right? Because you think you're 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 good uh, without it. But when you actually realize that it's time, it's it's uh, for some reason it's slow. Your application is slow. It's probably too late to add indexes. But database uh, can can handle that for you, obviously. And um, uh, not every application needs this. Uh, SQL like complex queries. Uh, but sometimes uh, they come in handy, mm, and uh, for data script, implement them as a, for, uh, as a form of not SQL but data log, which is uh, equivalent in power. Uh, the the best uh, use case for that is actually user constructed filters. So, for example, uh, when you filter GitHub issues, there is a search box when you can type type of the issue is issue, state is open, stuff like that. So it's user-constructed query, and uh, you can implement uh, the parser and uh, uh, execution engine by yourself, probably something MapReduce-like, which is super slow, obviously. Uh, or you can uh, use uh, Query Builder, build a query on the fly from the user, um, user data, and execute it on the, li on the live database and have your data Alert. And I mean, uh, there are like um, complex things like uh, hash joins, uh, negations, uh, and, and stuff like that, and the, even function calls inside the squares, like all the good stuff. Uh, the second option is ser client server sync, which is, um, which is, uh, I think it's still kind of unsolved problem for web applications. I mean, like. Uh, real web applications and that tries to work with user data and uh, in, in, in sort of multiplayer mode or collaboration mode like Google Docs where you like looking at the same document and you see everyone's changes in real time. Um, uh, that, that stuff is not really so solvable with something like REST or HTTP or uh, AJAX libraries because... Um, the data synchronization in a pro is a process. It's, it's not like a function call and the result of that function call, right? It's a process, uh, uh, and uh, all sorts of bad things can happen during that process, like uh, you can be disconnected, you can have um, repeated messages, you can, I don't know, uh, <laughs> be disconnected several times. I don't know. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah. Uh, you have uh, like a propel. Pro, you have you, you can you should have a propel. Pro, I'm sorry. You should have a propel uh, error handling and uh, stuff. And it's not like uh, easily done. It's it's easier to do if it was uh, implemented in a library in a way that you have the guarantee that um, when you do that it will be always correct and always reliable. Like, no matter what, no matter how bad your uh, connection conditions are, uh, you will get your data eventually. And the data you get uh, will be always uh, actual and correct. Like, uh, no missing data, no corrupted data, no like transactions that override each other because they arrived in different order, nothing like that. So and it, 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 it's really hard to implement with a library that, uh, with an ad hoc approach when you when, when you're actually trying to like do a jack call and hope everything is good. If, if everything is good, it's it's okay. But uh, if it is not, you're probably doing the error handling wrong. And uh, 
and uh, having the database in your uh, Azure Data Store solution uh, opens a possibility to have that solved once and for all in, for example, in a library, right? Decoupled from your code, so it doesn't matter uh, how your code works. You put uh, all your data in a database that is local to your application in, in memory, and somehow in the background, without your participation, it is synced to a server. Uh, reliably and uh, uh, correctly and all that, right? It would, it would be nice to have and it's e actually um, kind of easy to implement with uh, something like a database that have a transaction log so you can actually track every change that goes through the database. Uh, because uh, first you, you track every change and they have like transaction numbers and stuff like that. And the second, because uh, linear logs are quite easy to sync because you have, again, transaction numbers. You can always track what you have already synced, what you have not yet synced, what is missing, what is uh, pending to send to the server. So it's, it's, it's possible, right? Unlike the ad hoc solutions for example. Um, yeah, and uh, features that is uh, kind of related to client server sync is optimistic updates. So idea is that if you have your data synchronization figured out correctly, there is always a possibility that uh, server lags. I mean, in real life, server uh, is always at least like 100 milliseconds away. Right, and uh, every action, if you will check every action you do in your application with a server, it will be impossible to work with. So you have to do some sort of lag compensation there. And uh, extreme case of lag is uh, offline mode where lag is uh, effectively inf infinite, but uh, like it can be uh, two minutes, two hours, two days, or something like that. Uh, and you can still work with the application during that period. Because, um, so the, the approach here is that you have your database and you actually keep a track of all the transactions that happen uh, after you last seen the server, after you went offline or something like that. Uh, and it is okay because uh, the database that is synced is immutable and you just calculate another immutable instance based on the uh, sync in DB and transaction skew. And you render that. So basically, how it works, you always render like latest state. Basically, you have some non-good state and some optimistic updates. You apply them to, to your non-good state, and you you see what you want to see. But in the background, you're trying to synchronize this part to the server uh, while rendering the, the, the call. And it, wor it works uh, quite nice, so we, we use that approach in our application. It works really nice. So you can, um, for the user, it feels like you work you work with application in like locally, but in the background, it syncs to the server. Basically, the the end result of this is is that. Uh, so uh, the idea is that you use something like data script. Uh, uh, well, obviously, the talk is about data script, but uh, probably there are uh, another solutions for that. Uh, and it's uh, once you have a lot of state, or once you have a state that is complex, it's, it's structure, or you, you want to build a complex UI on top of a quite simple state, but the dependencies are complex, or you need to update a lot of components in a really tricky way, you need a systematic approach to how you manage your state. So data script is one option for that. Uh, there are obviously others. Um, it plays nice with React, obviously, because uh, as this, this formula of I have a state and I have a function that renders state to the DOM, uh, it works really well with uh, when, you, like, when, when your state is managed independently and it's it's a nice decoupled uh, architecture uh, for the application. Um, the uh, data script is uh, open sourced uh, in, on the GitHub. It was initially written for ClojureScript. It has JavaScript API. 
uh, and it can run on the server as a closure application as well. So we are even using that for rendering uh, universal isomorphic application. But uh, yeah, the idea is it. Thank you. Thank you for watching this talk. Down below, you can find our channel VNLGS, where you can find a lot of different videos about front end and back end JavaScript. And feel free to subscribe.